Hi everyone, Steve Perryman again, uh, this time without Howard. He's, I think, in Italy for a wedding. Uh, but we have the uh, the faithful Tom with us. Hi, Tom. Hi, Steve. I haven't How's gone things? anywhere. Yeah, How's I'm, things? I'm not in Italy. I'm not any wedding. I'm uh, sat here in sunny Hampshire. Yeah. Has, it uh, been, has it been sunny today? It's been very nice, actually. It's been very, very nice indeed. So, uh, yeah, I'm in my st- still in the conservatory and I've probably got the last few rays of sun of the day shining yeah. down. So, can't complain. Well, this is Monday evening we're doing this recording and uh, it's, we're actually a little bit later than we normally are. Um, there's been some chaos here because Monday night is the bell ringing practice night uh, of the church just over the garden wall. So at the same time, we are looking after my daughter Ella's dog. We've had him for about four days. He goes home tomorrow. So he doesn't like it, so starts barking. And then the neighbors, the garden neighbor's dog, this side, not the church side, this side, he then starts barking. And then it's like, we've got a chorus of bells and barking and it's all going off. So, um, so yeah, so Tom, um, of course we got to mention the Liverpool game. Um, your thoughts? just to start us off I think what sums what sums it up the most is that we finished the game gutted that we hadn't won um which I think says a lot before um you know I'm sure most of us would have uh, taken a point before the game no, no no problems whatsoever um but you know we we did a really good defensive job we created probably the 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 more clear cut chances um, throughout the game, I think, um, you know, I mean, they they just always the Liverpool. They it always feels a bit terrifying when they've got the ball. But look at looking back at the highlights um, and re- thinking about watching the game, I don't remember Salah or Mane really doing much throughout the game sure. at all. I think I think, sure. um, and I think that's a lot of credit to to our defence, but particularly Sessegnon, you know, who isn't necessarily known for his defensive prowess at Spurs. Um, but I think that's the second time we played Liverpool, and uh, and he's kept Salah really quiet. Yeah. Um this season. Um our goalkeeper didn't have much to do, Tom, did he? Yeah, nothing to do. He's only he was only beaten by a yeah, you know, by a deflection, which no one would have saved. Yeah. So, exactly um, right. But no, no, I thought I thought I thought we did well and I thought when we scored, it then looked like we were gonna maybe get another. We were we had five, ten minutes afterwards of 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 kind of pushing on. Um and then you know, obviously Liverpool score and you're kind of expecting if it's gonna go either way, then it's probably gonna be be them who gets the winner and and at the end, Hoybier had got looks like he got caught between not sure whether to head it at goal or or, or down to Kane. And in the end, he kind of did did neither really. And he end, ended up heading it back into back into nowhere really. And yeah. um, and look, look, look. I see, I see. There's some comments suggesting that Bergwin should have given him a call. Yeah, and therefore had greater momentum onto the ball to to bury it or or yeah. go for goal. Um. Maybe he didn't call. Maybe within the the intensity of the occasion, maybe it couldn't be heard. But um, when when you think about that that split moment, do I head back to Harry? Do I head for goal? Do I let it go? That's in a split second. Those three options, and maybe maybe there wasn't three options because maybe he couldn't hear the call. In which case, that's not an option. But I, 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 I'm saying this all the time. You are only right when you're right. <laughs> so if he'd headed for goal and scored, we'd have said, well done. No one would have said, why didn't he hit it to Harry? The fact he did what he did, which was a bit in between, just... Uh, and of course, this is... I see him as a defensive midfield player. He's the, he's the player that sort of strings it all together. He ends up in the box late on in the game. That's quite amazing, you know. That's amazing. So, so what a shame. You, you're right. We were we were actually disappointed with the point, and and yet, as again, as you said, a point would have would have taken it definitely without a doubt. 
And I, th- I think, um, yeah, Jurgen Klopp's post-match comments, which he's kind of, kind of downplayed a little bit today, but he said, uh, "Oh, I don't like that kind of football." And you're just like. You know what? What football don't you like? You know when a club actually comes and contains your team and creates enough chances to to to, to win yeah. it as well. You know, I mean, we're we're six months into a, a project with, with with Conte, and Klopp's been there for seven seven years, I think, coming up seven years. Yeah. I, mean, I was I was at his first game for um his first Liverpool game, which was against Spurs at White Hart Lane in in, in 2015, and and they were um I think it was nil nil, but. It's yeah. It doesn't actually seem that long ago thinking about it, but he's been there a long time. He's built an extremely good team, probably the yes. best the best team to to watch in the world at the moment. And um, yeah. we went up there. We did a we did a really good job on them with um with with, with a team that's still you know two 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 players who only joined us in January. Um, yeah. one one player Romero in particular who um who only joined at the beginning of the, the the season, and we did not look out of place. And I think the point that we got is probably less important in terms of the final few games of the season than the, the than the, the performance and what that'll do for us. Yeah. Um, I think in the next few, in the final few games, the, the confidence it will give us to hopefully um, turn over Arsenal on Thursday yeah. and, um, and and then hopefully have a, a bit of luck from, from one of their opponents in the final two games. I believe it's been the biggest pointer to what Conte is doing with this group of players improving them, pushing them on, giving them some belief as a team, self-belief. The two fullbacks, for instance, I mean, big, big question marks. And I'm not saying those question marks are gone by any means. You can't doubt so much. And then all of a sudden, one game just turn you around, your opinion. Surely that's not, that's not right. Um, I, I still have some doubts about Sessegnon. Uh, because he looks he looks bodily weak and therefore I think that is that spread to mentally weak not that he showed it on that game against Liverpool because he was very very good and the other lad the right wing back Emerson wow best game was, best game for Spurs by a mile where did he get that one from this was ultra competitive wasn't it yeah, absolutely. So, so you know, if if Conte is improving these players, and of course, when you get beat by Brighton, no one's talking about improvement, are they? No. We don't we don't think about improvement. Then we're just thinking, what a waste. But um, he's definitely having an effect on that group of players. And Tom, who who do you believe? Um, or think he's improved the most? I mean, the, the, the first player that comes to mind when you ask me that question is, um, is Doherty. Um, primarily because he'd been with us for, for a year. And in that time, we just felt we'd seen, yeah, the, I, I don't mean speak on, on behalf of Spurs fans, but the, certainly the ones that I speak to um, were just happy to see the back of him. If yeah, last over the summer or, or whatever, if we could have uh, made a few million back and um, never seen him play for Spurs again, in some people's uh, opinions, then then that would have been no problem at all. But he, the the, the fact he then got injured uh, after the Villa game and um, and we haven't he hasn't played since. The fact that there was an outpouring of yeah disgust at the nature of the challenge that injured him, but also um, frustration at the fact he wasn't going to be playing a part in our running when he'd suddenly forced himself into becoming a very important part of the um yeah. the system that Conte was playing yeah. so so he's he's the first one that comes to mind um i think you know i mean i mean kane and kane and son obviously playing really well this part of the season um but you know they they will cast combination players. yeah exactly. combination getting stronger yeah absolutely but then we did see them playing well together under under Jose sure. as well um, absolutely and you know they they're world class players who uh who, but, but I mean certainly son son I think he's just got 20 goals and he's the first Spurs player to get 20 goals in a season without any of them being penalties since um yeah. Gareth Bale in in 2012 2013 so um what a talent what a talent oh, he is he's brilliant is he just so likable as well yeah just what a talent love him absolutely love him so um 
yeah, I mean, Doherty in terms of like Phoenix from the Flames. Yeah, you know, just just someone who could just kind of turn his whole career around and 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 the, and the fans' opinions on him. But um, you know, I think I, I think certainly seeing the way the way that Son now finishes and and, yeah. and and interacts with with others around the box, I think he's um, benefited a lot from Conte as well. I like Davies. Yeah, big fan. He's too. turned he's turned into a very very solid head, and. Um, of course, if the team's working better together, be it, was it a back five? Was it a, a back four plus Sessignon was left a bit out wide and, and up, which I, I quite like that, actually. Um, then, of course, the goalkeeper's going to look better. He's got less to do. And, of course, the back line are going to look better because they've got less to do there's there's play a back five there's less holes to run into isn't there for the for the opponents so but I but even before a back five Davies has looked more and more and more solid if you if you can read his his body language he's he's got Lots more confidence. But you're talking about Doherty. Doherty was one ordinary soldier, wasn't he? You know, you, 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 we didn't actually think that when he signed. We thought, well, he's, he's caused us trouble in the past and he's good at this and he's good at that. And he's, OK, not, not that quick. But no, uh, Premier League but ready, he, you thought. Yeah, Premier League ready. That, that, what a good quote that is. So, yeah, he's... Um, he sort of dipped, but then was on his way back, wasn't he? With scoring goals and producing goals and all that goes with that. So, um, yeah. again, again, I come back to the point. It's Conte is giving them some, some gel, some glue to play together. The, the amount of effort that team put in at Anfield was... Truly remarkable. I mean, remarkable. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> of course, that that's got to be a given when you go to Anfield, because if you don't, if you don't match them and compete with them, they are going to run all over you. And we've seen enough of that in the past. And me, me personally, I've seen it from Spurs teams. But that team were obviously they had the good plan. People normally say how they how they set up. They had a good plan and they worked their socks off. So I thought it was very encouraging. Of course, the result the next day didn't help us too much, did it? It's another another team throwing the ball into their own net against Arsenal, that first goal. Absolute yeah. joke. Absolute joke. Yeah. But never mind. But I think just just go back to the like say the effort and and the game plan, you know the very, the very fact that in that in that final minute when when Liverpool have just got a late equaliser, you know they've got the cop trying to suck the ball in, and and it's our defensive midfielder who's up the other end, yeah, with that kind yeah. of golden chance. Even if he didn't take it, I mean, I think that yes. says a lot about the way that the um the, the the team was was sent out and 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 the way that the the effort that they spent throughout the game and and continued to to do so until the until the very end. So um yeah. I think that's all good signs. Again, I've seen comments. Why why did he take Kulu off? Why why this? Why that? Why Winks? But well, Winks provided the ball. Yeah, he did. For the head that could have been could have been the season saver. Could have been the next five seasons saver if that goes in. So and and actually, wouldn't that have put Arsenal under a bit more pressure if that goes in? Yeah. It would still so be... I think I think you've got to hold back on your opinions for the minute. I tell you, you shouldn't hold back on his opinions. Is Conte? Conte has read in training, in games, who he likes, who he very much likes, who he's sort of tepid about, and but they're all putting themselves up to be to be his type of player. And you have to say the ones that have left us are obviously not his type of player. And I'm not sure we'd have got that work rate out of Deli Ali. And Dombele. 
and and the ballet, mm. for instance. So so it took a team of of soldiers. Of course, we're more than that. We got some. We got a lot of ability, but it still takes the soldier element to come out first to then go and get that that draw. So so yeah. Tom, apparently you've got some questions to ask me. Well, I just thought we've kind of we've seen the subscriber numbers kind of uh, rock, rocketing up recently since we've moved on to to YouTube and um, you know putting the podcast out a bit more. So uh, I've got a feeling there's quite a few people who've joined recently who might not have heard some of your uh, some of your factoids yeah. and bit, bits and pieces and, that we've spoken about before, and hopefully younger ones. Hopefully younger ones. It's, you know, this is not all about, oh, he, he played this and he played that. Well, I never saw him play. I don't know. But uh, maybe maybe I can just give him a bit of a clue with some of your questions. So go on, Tom, far away. Hey. So training. Who is the hardest worker in training that you've ever been involved with? Uh, hardest trainer. And yet I think it's, because it's an individual position uh, and maybe went on longer than the rest of us did, um, was Pat Jennings, worked his socks off and enjoyed the work. Uh, you'd have to say as well that, you know, not all of, all of Pat's abilities came out of the textbook. You know, he had, to, you know, the one-handed save. <laughs> <laughs> who can teach that by the way it, that's that's because of his physique isn't it and his leap and his jump so so but but there's a certain amount of standard work that goalkeepers have to do and pat lapped it up i can see why pat jennings is involved at the club at the minute with the youth youth keepers uh because that's what he'll be demanding out of out of younger players because I'm sure he feels that's how he how he improved and stepped up to to, to different levels throughout his career, and um, it's nothing like um, it's nothing like hard work to to push you on. And I remember a quote from someone: "You you can't climb the tree, you can't climb the ladder with your hands in your pockets." So, I think I think Pat typifies that and. And um, what a man, and uh, certainly what a trainer. Sometimes I've seen it, having worked in different countries, I've seen goalkeepers actually work their socks off. But it comes to the game, and they're not good enough. Pat, Pat had it all, and one helped the other. The match, the matchability fitted the training and the training fitted the match ability so that that's why i say pat nice and uh yeah i'd echo love lovely lovely guy as well met him a few times in the last uh yeah last few years he's a such a gent great man okay on the on the flip side of that who is the the laziest train you've ever worked with mm. well i heard alan mullery give this answer um a few weeks ago on stage when we were attending a UEFA Cup function. And he nominated Jimmy Greaves. And at the time I thought, wow, that's, that's a statement. Um, and probably right. Um, and it sounds a bit disrespectful to say it about someone the laziest, but I think Jim had this in his head that he, he was about the first two or three yards sharp and I think he felt that the more typical running he did, that, you know, 97, 8% of footballers have to do, like me, who's scurrying about in midfield, the John Pratt's of the world and, and people like that, um, was not for him because it sort of detracted from him. If say people like myself and John, if we didn't do that work in mid in midweek, we would feel that we were lacking on the Saturday. So Jimmy was sort of keeping his powder dry for the moment, for the moment. 
And um, so credit to him. He, you know, what a wonderful career. What a great goal scorer. Look at his records. And um, so you can't, you can't criticise him for it. Um, as a young player, I said to myself when I saw him train, that's for Jimmy, but I'm not a Jimmy Greaves. <laughs> so, so, Steve, get, get back to what you know and uh, what you need. So, uh, yeah, but what, what, a, what a goal scorer. And I, I think he's one of those players, he didn't get paid to train. He got paid to put the ball in the net. Kind of um, makes me think of recent years of, uh, of Ledley, given that he was obviously missing cartilage in his in his in one of his knees and yeah. just couldn't and he, so he just could not train i think he just did a bit of swim uh, on my understanding maybe he did a bit of swimming or um yes. or, or something during the weekend yeah, yeah. And, and and then he'd be rolled out for the weekend you know people knowing full well what he's capable of and what he'll bring to the team and uh sure yeah a slightly uh a slightly more forced version of um the jimmy greaves saving himself for the for the weekend absolutely absolutely next one tom good stuff right then um Okay, this one. This one's a bit more about uh, about respect. So, um, who from your career or your childhood has is um, have, you, have you had the most respect for? Uh, yeah, who, who's yeah. So, um, growing up, uh, young footballers playing out in the street, playing over the field, uh, Bobby Charlton, without a doubt, Bobby Charlton. Bobby Charlton was the pinnacle of English football of an English gentleman playing the game the right way, had a fantastic shot, what power he had in his boots. And, um, you know, it cannot be about genes because his, his brother, Jackie Charlton, was nothing like that. Jackie Charlton was a big number five who played that position, didn't run too far left or right, but when that ball came in the middle, he headed it out. So, um, but Bobby could, volley he could he could hit a 60 yard ball on a on a sixpence so um you know so much so that if you went abroad and you were trying to describe to someone where you were from if you said bobby charlton they knew uh english yeah he was known certainly all over europe uh, if not the world Lovely. and um so but as as time went on i I really, really respected Billy Bonds. I thought Billy Bonds was the was a, a typical made English top league football player. He he yeah, typified hard work, he typified playing for his team, he typified playing for his club. He I, I sort of named him as a bit of a warrior and um, didn't have to go around kicking people, just played it tough, very tough, but very fair. And um, I, I probably need to speak to more West Ham people to find out if they felt the same about him. But, but he would be seen as, a, as the sort of the iconic he wasn't homegrown, was he? Because they bought him from Charlton. He was not homegrown, but it felt like he was homegrown and he was adored by the crowd. That's how it seemed to me. Um, but I certainly respected him as a as a, an opponent. Speaking of West Ham, actually, just reminded me of a of a funny story from last week when I was uh, on the train up to the uh, up to the Spurs Leicester game, and because uh, you um, you you attended my. Um, my 40th, 40th a, few weeks, yeah. a, few, a few weeks ago at Whitchurch uh, yeah. foot, football club where you're going to be coming to do a, uh, yeah. uh, a talk in a few weeks time. And, um, and I was, uh, I was on the, uh, on the, on the train, uh, probably, probably somewhere between Woking and uh, Basingstoke and Woking, I think. And then they, uh, I was sat next to a West Ham fan and uh, he was, um, we just got talking about football and he was saying, oh yeah, I hope, hope we lose to Arsenal today to screw you guys over. And uh, <laughs> all, 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 giving it all that. And, uh, and he said, uh, he said, oh, you're Spurs. Actually, I, funny enough, I met Steve Perryman the other day because um, I'm from Whitchurch and uh, he was, um, I was in the social club and Steve Perryman just come walking in and uh, apparently he was there for some bloke's, bloke, some bloke's birthday or something. I was like, really? <laughs> Not no, oh. it's you. No, I didn't have a clue. Wow. And 
yeah, heard all about that. But uh, but yeah, no, he said he he, he said he enjoyed chatting to you and uh, and that you, nice. had, you, you you had plenty of time for for them, given that they were Hammers fans rather than the Spurs. Yeah, no, they were they were actually nice people. So uh, he didn't give the team talk to his West Ham team before the Arsenal game, did he? Uh, oh God. They didn't. In fairness, I thought they put up quite a good fight in the first half. Mm. And they played, and they didn't kind of drop as many players as, uh, as I thought no, they would. No, that's but, right. But then um, it was only when they brought on Antonio, you thought would be the the battering ram in the second half, that they just suddenly stopped yeah. playing. And um, yeah, we need we definitely need something from um, from uh, Everton or, or Newcastle yes. in the next couple of yeah. games. Provided we sure. obviously do the business on Thursday, which isn't a given. But yeah. let's, do the, let's do the let's do the business first. Exactly, exactly. And we won't mention that game again. No, absolutely. Right, I've got um fi- final question, and because because I came to your seventieth do quite recently, I've got a feeling I might know one or two of the answers here. But um, who is your closest friend, or, or or who is still your closest friends from your from your time at Spurs? Yep. So I look at that as three three years, my apprentice days, young professional days. Uh, so that would be Phil Holder that regular listeners to this podcast would would certainly know about. Um, Phil was a great, um, I always say it, Sunes Perryman in the same youth team, eventually won the FA Youth Cup and neither of us were captain. And that was Phil Holder. Um, taught me a lot about captaincy, leadership, uh, leading from the front, uh, having an opinion and uh, standing up for yourself and how you should stand up for yourself on the on the football pitch so um so phil number one um phil eventually left and joined crystal palace and various other clubs um so next stage was peter taylor we signed him from crystal palace um played for the under 23s with him room with him um a lot and uh yeah, Peter's a really good man and a good player. Very, very good player. Um, played for England when he was in the third division with Crystal Palace, which is a bit of a feat to do that. So, um, yeah, if Peter lacked anything, I don't think he, he quite had the belief in himself that he should have. Um, so it, it might have helped him. This doesn't usually work, but it it probably would have helped him to be a bit more arrogant on the ball or to demand the ball or give it to me. I, you know, I ain't had a touch for five minutes. Come, give me the touch. Uh, but he certainly wasn't like that. It was a very, very nice character. And I speak to him a lot on the phone. And uh, and the last one would be Aussie Ardealers. Um, I, I think I helped him a lot when he came uh, to the club. Um, Fantastic character. What a player. Um, the surprise when I read that we'd signed him from that World Cup, 78 World Cup. Um, this man of, of so much energy and so many talents. And um, so, yeah, we got on very well together. Um, all three of those, I worked together after Tottenham. Phil... I took as my assistant at uh, Brentford, who eventually took over from me and got them their uh, first promotion out of Division Three for 40 years. Um, was was on the on the field at half time on Saturday for the for the Brentford Southampton game. Uh, him and his team uh, to pay respect to them because it was at some sort of anniversary of their winning the league. Um, uh, Peter Taylor was my assistant at Watford. And uh, again, we talk three or four times a week still about football. And Peter went on to, as we said on the podcast, he went on to manage England for a game and making David Beckham captain, etc. And had a great run of results with the under 21s before he was harshly uh, pushed out of the job. And Ozzy, of course, Ozzy brought me back to Tottenham um, under the Sugar era, which turned out not to be a great choice of mine to, to return, but did lead me to go to, um, to Japan with Ozzy. And um, 
we agree that we had the best three years of our lives there. So as a player, I spent many happy hours with Ozzy and his family. And of course, we spent similar hours in Japan. And Ozzy built such a good team in Japan and eventually left and I took it over. And I virtually did what Phil did with the players that I left him. I took the players that Ozzy left me um, to win a championship and, and do good stuff. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, um, I think when you make someone a special friend, it goes a bit deeper than just, oh, they've gone now. That's it. It's finished. So, uh, Phil and Peter was at my 70th. Ozzy would have been there, but he, he had to work his ambassadorial role at Tottenham that afternoon, which was fine, absolutely fine. Ozzy, I saw Ozzy's uh, son yesterday, uh, Castle Coombe, which is only about five minutes away from here. He was with a group of friends from Hertfordshire that he grew up with, and uh, they were playing golf. So uh, good to meet him just for a quick drink before I came home. But uh, Ozzy's striding out on his walks. Freddie's telling me so delighted with his progress. So, so yeah, three, three proper friends that that you meet through football, but you keep because of friendship, not not because of football. Um, so yeah, nice, nice, all good, good men, really good men. And um, yeah, you were saying something to me the other day about uh, the Barry Manilow song with regard to Tottenham. Can't smile without you. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, bit of talk at the moment about about the the use of it before kickoff at, at White Hart Lane. I think it's been um, I think it's been used three times now. Uh, first one was against Everton when we won five 0 So uh, so no one no one minded that at all. Um, I guess, and then the, uh, the the second time it was used was against Brighton when we lost yeah. one nil, and uh, there was a lot of chat afterwards about whether whether this kind of quite you know it's a song that's obviously got a lot of um, fond associations with Spurs, particularly the away away trips in the seventies and the eighties. Um, but yeah, you know, whether, whether whether it's the kind of song to to play before a match to get the fans you know, G'd up and fired up and ready to create a cauldron of noise uh, is, is, is a bit debatable. Um, so after the Brighton game, yeah, lots of people were were, were talking about it in a, in a bit of a negative way then. Um, yeah, not dissing yeah. the connection of, with, of the song to Spurs or, or, or what it means to Spurs, but just in, in terms of its uh, positioning as a, you yeah. know, let's kick off with a with, with style type thing. Um, yeah. And then it was used again before the Leicester game, which obviously we won we won 3-1 as well. But again, quite a lot of whispering afterwards about whether whether it's an appropriate kind of first yeah. first song. And, and you know, whether, whether or not the club are trying to make it, you know, our kind of you'll never walk alone, you know, a kind of, you yeah, know, not a kind of thunderous, you know, atmospheric song, but more of a kind of um, yeah. associative slow burner. I don't know. But yeah, not sure it works as a, mm. you yeah, know, maybe something to Maybe maybe at half time perhaps, but yeah. Well, I asked a question because I had I had a message with I'm gonna tell you about two messages that you get through the Facebook and stuff. One said, I'm really sorry, Steve, I can't come to your talk at wherever, uh, because unfortunately I've got to take my wife for the un- umpteenth time to the Barry Mar- Manilow concert. And I replied, and it's very difficult to give replies on Facebook because you're saying the same sort of things to everyone. And uh, I said, well, I won't be able to smile without you. And um, hopefully that went down okay. And the other one was uh, was actually today, and this chap answered something. And he, he he's obviously an Englishman living in Japan, and he attended the Espos, which was my team and Ozzy's team in Japan. He attended their game last week. They were away from home. They took an unbelievable amount of supporters and there was a picture of the the bulk of the support and they won 4-1 away from home. He said, and if you notice, there's an English flag in amongst all those flags. And I think that's that's with respect to you, Steve. So made made me feel very proud when you have that sort of effect in a foreign country. So... 
So yeah, thank you, Tom. Much appreciated. We're um, another one done. Um, missed Howard, of course, but uh, he'll be back soon uh, from his from his wedding, not his personal wedding. But um, yeah, let's not mention the Arsenal game on Thursday. But yeah, come on, you Spurs. Got to make some noise. Yeah. Cheers, Tom. Cheers, Steve. Good luck. See you soon. Say hello to the family. Bye, mate. Bye, bye. 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 bye.